Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing nylon, creep, and annealing. Why nylon? Nylon has an interesting set of mechanical properties. It actually has good layer adhesion, great tensile strength, and decent impact resistance, as well as very good temperature resistance uh, with certain nylons. Obviously, that's a very wide brush. But because of all those things, nylon is good for printing spicy items, as well as lowers, pistol frames, and stuff like that. So that is why I'm interested in nylon. There are other plastics out there, polycarbonate some of them also have very good mechanical properties but that's another subject for another video today's video we're going to be focusing on nylon specifically we're going to be focusing on creep with nylon and how i'm trying to fix that using annealing before we go any further i want to briefly define what creep is some of you may be confused about that so before we define creep i want to take one step back and just discuss uh, the tensile properties of plastics in this case particularly nylon generally speaking when a piece of nylon is breaking it goes through three different stages the first one is elastic deformation so that is the area you want to be in on an actual part you're using so the plastic will bend but it'll spring back to where it was going plastic deformation is the yield point of that material that's where you transition to plastic deformation at that point the plastic actually flows bends plastically like a putty and will not return and then the third stage you get is the actual ultimate tensile strength which is where the plastic tears apart and uh, you now have two different pieces of plastic and your failure is complete what uh, we are going to be talking about today is the yield point so the yield point is where the plastic goes from being elastic and everything's good to actually irreversible damage that yield point is kind of the important number when you're looking at tensile strengths for plastic so for uh Toloman alloy 910 it's about 8 to 10,000 psi depending on moisture conditioning i'm going to use that as an example briefly what creep is is when you are loading the plastic with stress significantly lower than that uh that yield point and an example of significantly lower would be 1,000 pounds per square inch. So at 1,000 pounds per square inch, you're 10 to 12% of the actual yield strength. So you should be have a huge margin of safety, and you normally do. But what creep is, is at that loading, the plastic very slowly deforms and stretches uh, irreversibly in a plastic way, and so it, you end up with a part that deformed. Uh, that is creep. At a So creep is plastic deformation at stress levels significantly lower than the yield point of the material. I guess that would be a good way of summarizing it. Places you might see this are pins, uh, pins that are under spring pressure, even with bushings in some cases, such as with Overage Easy Nylon, those pins or bushings can actually flow in the plastic and your holes will get egg shaped. That is a result of creep. Uh, the second thing you can see is when you're tightening screws down. Uh, if you like the front takedown pin plates on my lower receivers, I did some experiments using Overage Easy Nylon and even carbon fiber nylons and other filled nylons exhibit this property to some degree. But if you torque screws down, the plastic will actually flow away from underneath the screw and nut and you'll end up having to constantly retighten your screws to keep them tight and you'll see that on lots and lots of parts that are screwed together and the third place you can see creep is on levers that are under string pressure this is another example and a good example is on my ar9 lower i printed from over easy nylon once again and that lever is under spring pressure on the end of it and you're supposed to be able to push it like this but what happened is that spring bent it up like that over a few weeks so it's now bent way up basically irreversibly and that was caused once again, by the plastic creeping or flowing at a uh, amount of stress significantly lower than its yield point. So I hope that defines creep. Let's jump into the rest of our testing. Now let's talk about annealing. So annealing is when you take a plastic like nylon, which is semi-crystalline, you heat it up to a certain point and hold it there so that the plastic can properly crystallize. I don't fully understand the process myself, but basically you're taking all the molecules which are kind of randomly jumbled up inside the plastic and you're kind of straightening them all out so that it becomes uh, crystalline rather than amorphous. So now rather than just being a bunch of jumble of molecules, all the molecules are properly aligned and that might fix creep and that's what i'm testing actually in this video so for annealing i use my uh, filament dryer which runs right around 182 degrees fahrenheit which i think is like 185 degrees fahrenheit in that range 180 to 185 but i think is like 80 some degrees celsius that is the appropriate temperature for annealing most nylons that's what most manufacturers recommend so it's the perfect temperature and that's what i used in this video for annealing so all of my annealing was done i took the sample off the printer put it right into the filament dryer uh, at that temperature and I annealed it for several hours. Normally two hours. I think that one sample I did two hours, one I did two and a half hours. Uh, so that's what I did for annealing. That is my method for annealing. Now I want to talk about my 
creep testing setup and how I'm running those tests before I actually show you the test in action. So my uh, creep testing setup, I wanted to print a sample and then apply a constant constant tensile load uh, for the duration of the test. So what I did is I printed off these little weird looking hook things and then I made some adapters from polycarbonate and the adapters slipped through a 10 pound uh, iron or steel weight with a hole in the middle and then the sample slips through the bottom of the little retainer piece, clips into my wire shelf and it all hangs there very nicely. And what that does is it applies a constant load to the sample. So as the sample stretches, the load is constant. In this case, with this particular samples I'm using, I had a 10 pound weight. And if you calculate that with the cross section of the sample, it works out to right around 1000 pounds per square inch of stress, which is 10 to 12% of the actual yield point of the materials I'm actually testing in this test. So that was my creep test. I took the samples off the printer, I annealed half of them, half of them I did not anneal. I then hung them up using these 10 pound weights, let them sit for a couple days, took them down. I, before hanging them up, took their length measurements. Afterwards, I took their length measurements, and then I can compare those two measurements to see how much the plastic samples creeped during the test. I tested two different filaments. One of them is the Overture Easy Nylon. This is a low cost, very easy to print with nylon filament that has no filler, no glass, no carbon. It's just plain, a plain nylon. I don't know if it's a blend. I assume it's a blend between several different nylons, but I actually don't know. It's just advertised as nylon of some type or other, and it prints nice. The reason I tested this nylon is it has a particularly bad creep issue, as I mentioned earlier with my AR9, with pin shifting, and with front takedown pin plate screws becoming loose. I've had all of these problems very badly with over Treasy Nylon. That's the first plastic which I tested. The second plastic I tested is the Toloman glass fiber uh, alloy uh, nylon. So that nylon, I have had excellent results. It has had no nozzle clogging issues. It prints beautifully with no warping, easy to use, and it is a natural color. And I might be able to dye it some cool colors. We'll see. But it also has a creep issue. Now, I really like the impact resistance, the tensile strength, the layer adhesion, and how easy it is to print with this glass filled nylon from Toloman. It has the one issue though of creep. I've seen some pins creeping uh, as well as some other creep issues with it. So I thought I would test it as well to see how it responds to annealing. Important question is how did the annealing affect the samples? Obviously, if the annealing causes a lot of warpage or shrinkage, it's not gonna work. So I will start with the Overture Easy Nylon because I conducted the test first. And I have some notes here I made so I can read off some actually accurate numbers to you. So these samples have reference notches printed into them so I can easily measure their length with a pair of calipers. And the distance should be two inches. Now, as printed, they worked out to a little bit over that from one to five thousandths oversized. After annealing, the samples worked out to about 1.96 inches. So that is a 40 thousandths undersized, which works out to a little bit over 2% of shrinkage. That's a lot of shrinkage. This is with the Overture Easy Nylon. I also noticed a uh, little bit of warping as well. The samples tended to curl up a little bit during printing and the edges, the sharp corners around the top of the print actually softened a little bit and rounded over from the plastic kind of shrinking in. So there was definitely a lot of deformation with the Overture Easy Nylon. Now, with the Toloman Alloy 910, it was actually a lot better. So the Tol Toloman Alloy 910, once again, started out about three thousandths oversized and then shrunk down to a couple thousandths undersized. While it was definitely a shrinkage, it was only about 0.2%, which is very little. It can still be a problem and needs to be considered, but it is way, way less than the uh, Overture Easy Nylon. I assume this is because the glass fibers in the Toloman glass fiber nylon prevented a lot of that shrinkage and distortion. The samples also if you looked very carefully along the edge, showed possibly a little bit of upwards curling, but very little. Overall, the samples appeared unchanged from when they were unannealed to when they were annealed. So the glass, the Toloman actually responded really nicely to annealing, and I was uh, pleased with the results. Now let's talk about the final results of the test. So I took my samples, I put the weights on them with the adapters, hung them on my shelf for the necessary amount of time, and we're going to start with the Overture Easy Nylon, which hung for 37 hours. And as a little note, while you consider these results, I'm going to tell you, the 
towel made in glass fiber nylon actually hung for uh, 49 hours. So unfortunately, it was not an exact amount of time between the two, but I still think the test results are very interesting and valid. I just was not able to get the Toloman down in time to match the times, but it was pretty close, about 25%. So the Overture Easy Nylon, after 37 hours, the results were very interesting. The unannealed samples almost came off of the wire rack because the hook on them actually crept around and what almost bent off, as you can see. Uh, they actually, looking at the numbers, they started out about just a little bit over two inches and they ended up almost 50 thousandths over two inches. So on a two inch sample, the change was a right about 2%. So uh, they went from the, the unannealed sample started at two inches and they grew by 2% to end up at about 102% of their original length. That is a lot of creep. Now, the annealed samples started out way undersized because they shrunk during annealing. They started out about 1.96 inches, so about 40 thousandths undersized. They grew to about 1.6 inches. So looking at the actual numbers, before the test, they were the two annealed samples were at 1.958 and 1.957. So right, right about 1.958. After annealing, they were both 1.96, and obviously there's probably several thousands of error in my measuring method using my calipers because the plastic is soft. But that works out in the end to about 0.1% growth. 0.1% compared to 2%. So the annealed samples uh, creeped by 1 20th of the unannealed samples. So the annealing made a huge difference. Now let's move on to the Toloman glass fiber nylon. The results were surprisingly similar. Once again, the sample started out right around two inches. The annealed samples were about four thousandths shorter because they did shrink, but it was much, much smaller than with the Overture Easy unfilled nylon. After the test, the samples worked out to the annealed, the unannealed samples, we'll start with unannealed, worked out to about 35 thousandths oversized. And this test, mind you, went on about 30% longer than the uh, the Overture Easy Nylon test. So they worked out to about, uh, that works out to about 1.5% of growth. 1.5 to 1.6% of growth is what it worked out to be. So a little bit better than the Overture Easy Nylon, but still really bad. You could see it on the samples. They were kind of twisted. The hook was bent up on top. Definitely had a serious creep issue. After annealing, the samples uh, actually changed from 1.98 inches to 2.001 inches. So they grew by three thousandths of an inch. This is the annealed samples. And that works out to 0.15%. Very, very similar to the Overture Easy Nylon, which actually came in, if you look at all the results, it came in at 0.1% and 0.15%. With the two numbers, with the Toloman, it was 0.15 and 0.15, because we had two samples for each one. So very, very similar results. The annealing made a huge difference and basically cured our creep issue. We're looking at percentages here that are very small, uh, almost a tenth of a percent, which, which is significant in some cases, but if you compare that to the unannealed samples, uh, that's basically no creep at all. You're looking at a factor of uh, like 1 to 20 or 1 to 15, depending whether you look at the glass filled or the unfilled nylon. So the annealing made a huge difference. Now let's look at one more metric, which was kind of interesting. So the Overture Easy Nylon test today was completed two weeks ago. Those samples have just been laying on my desk in the open air since then. And today, this evening before doing this video, I decided to measure those samples to see how they had changed just sitting there. And the results were really interesting. So the annealed samples, which had very little creep, actually expanded. They got longer by a little under half a percent. They got longer by about four tenths of a percent. And I assume that that is from them absorbing moisture and expanding because of that moisture absorption. That was interesting. The unannealed samples that had so much creep actually shrunk and they shrunk by about half a percent. I assume that that is the plastic recontracting of uh, slowly kind of recreeping and kind of going back to where it was. And of course that would be offset by the moisture absorption uh, which is going to cause them to expand. So the samples definitely returned back to where they were going but they only went about 25% of the way back or if you account for the moisture absorption, which is half a percent, they only went halfway back. So they creeped 2% and then they relaxed 1% back, or in this case, half a percent if you don't consider the moisture absorption. I thought those results were interesting because uh, the annealed samples definitely contracted. I mean, the unannealed samples 
after creeping definitely contracted and the annealed samples actually grew a little bit because I assume of moisture absorption. Now let's look at the similar metrics for the Toleman glass fiber nylon, which I actually only finished testing four days ago. So four days is all that's gone by, which is a lot less than the 14 days with the Overture Easy nylon. But we can still see some results here. And looking at it, the uh, at the end of the test with the annealed samples, which had basically no creep or very little creep, uh, the annealed samples actually didn't change dimensionally at all. They were about one thousandths over two inches and they ended up about one thousandths over two inches. So no change whatsoever. The unannealed samples also worked out to uh, the one sample went from 35 thousandths over to 33 thousandths over and one sample went from 32 thousandths over to 33 thousandths over. I assume those are errors in my measuring method. So the glass fiber nylon showed no dimensional changes in four days. Now obviously 14 days is a lot longer, almost four times, but if you take four times, you're not gonna get the kind of changes we got, I don't believe, looking at these numbers with the Overture Easy Nylon. I will take that measurement, and if there is a change, I will update you guys. But it looks like the glass fiber nylon is a lot more dimensionally stable than the unfilled nylon. Just thought that was a little interesting tidbit here at the end. Let me try to summarize for you guys and come to a conclusion of whether or not annealing is worth it. So first of all, I'll say, this is not enough testing to really know for sure. But I believe that the dimensional changes with the unfilled Overture Easy Nylon made annealing impractical for most parts because that amount of shrinkage and the slight amount of warping it caused is going to cause too much dimensional inaccuracies for an accurate part. However, the glass filled nylon from Toleman 3D, and I'm sure other filled nylons, but this is the one we tested, showed very little dimensional change, very little warping, and it made a huge difference. So I would say annealing filled nylons is definitely worth looking into and I am going to be continuing the experiments with it and will probably print myself a lower and then anneal it uh, to get reliable results without any creep, pins shifting or other issues. So annealing nylon, definitely worth looking into. Uh, it caused huge improvements in the creep testing, specifically with the filled nylons. Obviously this testing with annealing nylon opens up a whole new series of interesting experiments I could do with impact resistance and tensile strength to see how annealing affects it, which I would like to do. Uh, we'll see, or when I get time, I'll definitely try some of those tests. Annealing though, to fix creep issues, definitely does the trick. It's just a matter of whether or not you can afford the mechanical changes. All right, guys, I hope you guys found today's video not too worried. I hope you found it interesting, useful. Definitely look into annealing. Make sure you dry your nylons before printing it, and I'll see you guys again next time. Thank you so much for watching.